All right, so is that, that that should not be a problem. I I think we have about eleven more minutes to go. So uh, let us talk about um um Mr. Ifeoluwa, Adebola Ifeoluwa. Um, so we will talk about that one thing that um you propose in your mind to start um things yesterday, and then you started. Can you all hear me right? Hello? Okay. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. All right. So we talked about just briefly that one thing that um, you want to, or you started since yesterday and the like. So just tell us one thing so we can all learn for me just one one thing one thing we talk about so let's everybody share let's start with uh first. all right let's go with mr Olua shemi here let's go with you first okay sir um good evening everybody good evening good evening okay i'm Olua shemi and what i decided to be very intentional about is what uh was actually engaged me in conversation about just a few minutes ago. And it's about um, graphics design and animation. My department has, has a way of choking out your extracurricular activities out of you. So yesterday I decided to be more intentional about graphics and public speaking. So I really have interest in public speaking and volunteering. So yesterday I decided to take it up more intentionally. And that mean, meant that I would have to sacrifice the time for other things like sleep and maybe games and all of that. Sure. But I decided to take up that responsibility. And today I've joined about two groups for volunteering. And, and I and still have plans for the public speaking. Probably I'll engage in a training online, of course. And the graphic design, I've made two designs today, actually. So I believe this is just the beginning. And I'll find time to get more equilibrium and focus well. That's it, sir. All right, great, great, great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, Miss Alabi Deboga, let's have you. Uh... Good evening, sir. Good evening, ma. Good evening, sir. Good evening, ma. Yes, sir. It's, I, I would like to, as in, I've been proposing to join this copywriter store. Are you hearing me, sir? Yeah, sure, sure, I'm with you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Copywriter. Please. Yes, sir. So I I have already joined the group on WhatsApp. So they, are, they have already given us the date to do that as, they are, as to learn. To learn, sure. So, and also the graphic design, same year, sir. I mean, more interacting with people, not isolating myself more again, sir. Okay, I'll can you get me, sir? Yes, I, I got the first and the second, then the last one you talked about. So, how did you practice? Um, and not isolating yourself. How did you work on that? Like, I mean, asking question from people. Like, when everything is not clear like that, maybe like that copywriter like that, maybe when they are doing the seminar like that, I will have to ask questions. I will have to meet people for more knowledge like that. Okay, okay. So that means you will have to, not you have done it, right? It's like a future tense. I have yeah. already, no, I have already joined the group on WhatsApp. Okay. All right. So all they right. are giving us a date to meet. All right, all right, awesome, perfect, perfect. So what if um they did not now start what they want to do on the group? What will you do next? I will look forward for another opportunity, maybe me personally buzzing on it and have 
I don't, I will look for another another means to get the knowledge, sir. And what if you start another means in uh, that another means? What if you start it now? Yeah, it's gonna start. You said, sir. I do not hear that. It it starts now, yes. Yeah. So that means you started the other means too now. I think it starts right now. Right now. Hello, sir. Yeah, I'm with you. I I can hear you. All right, all right. Thank you so much. Now I'm waiting for the uh, this proposal that so that we are going to meet. Oh, okay, so I, I was I okay, was. So I'm waiting for it. Is this month actually? All right, no problem. That's... For the seminar like that. All right, no problem. That's fine. That's fine. That's that's awesome. Um, Mr. Ebenezer. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, <sir>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're running to. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Professor. All right, no problem. So, what is that one thing that you're trying to work on? Mm, actually, I love electronics. Said? I, I love electronics. You love electronics? Okay, okay. I do know coding. I do know, okay, okay. That was what I'm planning to work on. That's what. That was what I'm planning to work on, sir. So have you started working on it? Yes, sir. You said. Yes, sir. So what did you do on it? Mm, actually, I started reading about the improvement to Arduino and the modern improvement, sir. You said. I started reading the books, the introduction to Arduino and some other things. So when did you start the reading? Like last week. Last week, oh beautiful. So what did you do yesterday? So today? Ah, oh, actually I I need system, but I'm still reading some things about this. You need system. Yeah, but I'll, I'll get it, sir. You get system? No, I said I need system to carry some things, but I've not got system to try some things like that. Okay, okay. Okay. For Arduino, you need system. What about the, your kit? What about the board? What about how you would go about that? What about the board, the Arduino board? Um you have it. Yes, sir. All right, all right, all right. So do you have anybody um with system around you? No. Nobody. Yes, uh, well, you try try to try to search a little. You have someone with system. There is no way around. It might not be immediately beside you or immediately um, as uh, maybe your roommate or something. But then there will be someone. Uh, so uh, people that have it, they are not able to read. People that have it, they are not able to read. I uh, no. That means you did not get how you will. You can you can actually um, negotiate with people to get things once they see that you're really serious about it. Once there's this way that people they might not release it the way you want, but then there's still a way that you can still go around it, right? I know someone that when he started um, programming, he did not have a system. Right, and then so what it does is that you just go to the person and tell the person that um, by the time the person is leaving for school, maybe for lecture or the likes, so we say, Okay, I will make use of the system by this time to this time. Then, before the person gets by, we ensure that maybe he said around 10, we'll be getting the system around 10 to 2 or 10 to 12. You get, I might be overnight, or um, uh, maybe you tell the person that 
once it's 12, 12 p.m., you will come and get it. Then you'll be returning by uh, maybe 7 a.m. in the morning. One thing you just ensure that that 7 a.m. or, or it's, it's already at the door, nothing to return it. So that way, there's just a way around things. Even if one person is not releasing it, you go and meet another and meet another. You see someone that is really okay, you say, okay, this is nice, this is not bad, let me help. We get the gist. So please and please. All right. All right. So look into it, please. Um, Mr. Jero. Mr. JFA. Sir, I'm with you, sir. All right, so. Good evening, sir. Good evening, good evening. So let's, add, you, sir. let's add you, what is that one thing that we talked about yesterday that you, you started work on? Okay, so for me, I've been trying to be more, more social with uh, people, like students, because I work as an ambassador of uh, the two brands, so I'm trying to be more social with so I can meet up with the target of the brand, so that I can meet up with them. All right, so what have you done on it? As of today, I was in different laboratory like, class, and uh, I was uh, was discussing with so with the class, the two class in my school about so few things. So that one really helped to boost my confidence more. Yeah, that's good. All right, all right, all right, all right. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. So let's have the last person before we um go to our class for today. Um, let's have uh, who else? I think this person is going on and off. So let's take the person. Uh, who else? We have miss grace about them i i want to be sure i'm getting your your name yes. all right so let's have you what is that one thing that you learned yesterday Sir? so what is that one thing that we talked about yesterday that you started work on hello Hello. I, I I'm not sure if she's with us. I'm not hearing what you're saying, sir. What are you saying? I said we um discuss about uh what we discussed yesterday during our, our, our last session with Mr. Lawrence Ajayi. So, and then we thought after the class, we said everybody should pick a thing that you work on. So, by today, which is where we are presently, anyways, that we ask everyone about what they have worked on so far on it. So, what is that one thing, and then what are the steps that you've taken on it? Okay, no problem. Uh... Okay, okay. The one thing we talked about was roadblocks. We should try to we should try to set our goals before when when we want to enter this semester because right now we are we are in second semester. When we want to enter second semester, I told my my neighbor that I want to go into all this leadership stuff and leadership stuff and ambassadors and all shall. So I don't even know this this stuff will even come up. 
and secondly i'm um, on the fifth this week Do you hear what I said, sir? Yes, I heard um the beginning, but then along the way, I think I didn't hear that. You said on the fifth, then I didn't hear anything again. So on the fifth, yes, I will too. Oh, I guess um we could not um get uh so sir do you hear what i said you said on the fifth so i i did not get that uh what happened on the fifth do you hear what i said sir i said on the fifth so that's i think that's where okay. uh, okay do you mean what is happening on the like the stuff the stuff i mean to like the ambassador i was giving right yes yes okay it's about savings it's about it is saved for you automatically because most undergraduates now they are not they are, they don't have, they don't have this discipline of savings so it's an app that you save your money automatically either you you save and as you earn or save as you spend Save as you win in the sense that from your account or save as you spend is when you when you go to bank and withdraw your money, they will they will remove maybe two percent, that's fifteen era. Then they will save it. So at the end of three months you collect your money. You can collect your money at any time. You can collect your money at any time, in the sense that even you collect your money at any time. On um, before the maturity date, which is the three months, you will you they will remove one percent of your money, and if you if you are saving till one till one year, they will give you fifteen percent discount. That's all about my splash, sir. Okay, okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. That's that's beautiful. Okay, um, because of time, let's, um, so maybe at the end, we can talk more about um, the whole thing from other persons who, and then we round it up from there. All right, so um, for today, we'll be having our, uh, um, it's my Oga, you, you know, I'm just a small boy learning from everybody, right? So it's my Oga, Patakwata. Right. Um, so. Sir, okay, sir. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Now? Yes. Do you yes. understand what I'm saying? Now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Are we are we together? Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. Yes sir. We are with you, sir. All right. All right. So I want to know if everybody's all right. So that's that's great. So um, like I was saying, um, so this person is um, the founder of Anima Home, and then Anima was started in in a university. Now it is in multiple universities, and then it um, you know, sometimes I wonder how. He decides to go and be saving animals when human beings have not saved totally yet. Right? It still, it still bothers me how someone decides to devote his action and um, the whole thing to animal. I mean, human beings, we are not safe, we are not secure yet in the world. And we are so, so passionate about saving. I don't know. <laughs> right? So uh, um, we have opportunity to ask questions uh, at the end of the whole thing. Ask questions. Maybe you can ask that question. Why? Why are you when you have been right? Maybe you can be able to answer it to and the like. So, um, so let's have Mr. Obalulu Abusari. Welcome, sir. Welcome, 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 sir. 
Welcome, sir. Everyone. Yeah, thank you very let's, much. Let's, let's, uh, let's welcome. Mira. Okay. Let's welcome. Let's welcome, Oga. Welcome. You are very much welcome, sir. Thank you for being here. Welcome, sir. Okay. Welcome, okay, so welcome, sir. Uh, I'm. Thank you, everybody, for having me here tonight. Uh, it's a great privilege to speak with great minds like you. The first thing is that uh, I understand that anybody that is in this program currently, uh, this set of people have a development mindset and uh, much more than your current position right away, I know that there's something big coming out of you. So I congratulate you once again for making yourself available for this program. Please, can you hear me? Let me be sure because I'm having issues with network. I had to move outside, so no, yes, we can hear you, yes, we can okay. hear you sir. Okay. We can hear you, sir. Okay, no problem. So, uh, without wasting much of our time, as he has rightly introduced me, uh, so I happen to be the founder and the director of Animal Home, and Animal Home is a non profit organization that promotes animal welfare. So without going much details into that, so if you want to join Animal Home, you can get my contact from him and message me privately. So without going much into the details, let me just go directly into what we have today. I'll be sharing my screen with you. I'm very sorry. I should have used my system, but the network is not allowing me. I've tried using it, and I see that I'm not really being in alignment with what is going on perfectly. So that's the reason I'm using my phone instead. So I'll be sharing my screen with you for you to see what we have together and we just discuss in a few minutes before we end, okay? Okay, can, can you all see my screen now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can you all see my yes, screen? Yes, sir. Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'll have to. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, let's move on now. So, I'm um, given the topic vision and its preparation. Vision and its preparation. And uh, without using two Google's English, I'll just go directly into it using. Uh, examples as much as possible okay so let's start with what is vision uh, i'm someone that studied animal behavior deeply as you know i'm the founder of a non-government organization that works with animals so and uh, one of the things we study in animal behavior is their visual sense so there's something we call visual sense in humans also we have visual sense it is believed that humans have about 180 degree panoramic vision so what that means is that we humans we cannot see what is directly behind us so if you stretch forth your hand straight you see that your eyes can only capture the tip of your hand your fingertips but not what is behind it without you moving your head so if you have to see what is behind you you have to move your head so that's what we call panoramic vision and one thing is that animals actually have better visual sense. That is, they can see what is behind them. That's why when you choose a goat, even without the goat knowing you are coming, you see the goat running away. That's because they can actually see you coming from behind. So, but when we talk about this vision, it is different from the normal visual sense we are talking about. So we are not talking about the physical thing you can see. We are not talking about um, your microscopic vision or macroscopic vision. So I define vision as the ability to create a mental image of what life will be in the future. So I said it is what guide a person or a group of person or an organization into taking the necessary step towards achieving a goal. So most times when you want to write a business plan or an organizational plan, they will ask you, there's a portion that you state the vision and the mission of the organization. So it is believed that it is 
what a person, or maybe the owner of the business or the organization or group of person sees that made them actually create something like that. So it is what guides them. So when someone has a vision, then it guides the person's lifestyle or it guides the person's dream. Or let me see a group of persons now so that it won't look like you are talking about one person. So it guides their lifestyle or their dreams per time. Okay, let me use this as an example for you. Let's say you are a blind person. I'm not trying to diminish the disabled. I'm just trying to use this to explain. Now, you and another blind person. In front of you is someone pointing a gun to you, threatening to kill you. Now, definitely, just because of what you see ahead, you know where you can hide, at least to dodge the bullets. But someone that is blind actually does not see anything in front of him or her and can't move because he or she does not know where the bullet is coming from except if the person is actually making a sound then the person can listen to the sound and know what to do but without sound the person will remain in just one position so what i'm trying to bring out here is that vision is what guides someone's lifestyle so the person that dodged the bullets and ran away from the scene is actually did that because he can see something that the other person cannot see so we said vision is the primary motivator of human action so all action or let me say majority of the actions of human is guided by vision majority of the action of human is guided by vision and we see that that is why it is one of the most important sense organ our eyes is, is one of the most important sense organs we have as human no, Jonathan Swift referred to it as an art of seeing. Okay, I'm sorry for the typo. Refer to it as an art of seeing what is invisible to others. Okay, there's no typo there. It is the art of seeing what is invisible to others. So that's why I'm trying to tell us that it is different from the normal eyes. Definitely, everybody has eyes. But vision is seeing what others could not see. Vision is seeing what others believe that this thing is norm. And you are seeing it that this thing is something I can work on. That is vision. That is vision. Like I told you that as I'll be going on, I'll be using, where well, I'm not trying to use myself an, as an example, as someone that has achieved. Definitely. I'll probably maybe we're on the same level self. But I'll just use it so that you understand better and we see how we can work this thing out together. Okay. Now, when... Um, animal was about to start. I remember that I sat down one day and I was looking at it. That okay, we have a lot of welfare organizations for human. Definitely, most NGO even work with human here in Nigeria. But here in Nigeria, we don't have much organizations that deal with animals. And definitely, I am seeing something. Do you know that at least I remember I told so many people then, and a lot of people told me this is Nigeria, nobody will buy the idea. Now, definitely, those people are not seeing what I was seeing. That is what we call vision. It is when you see something that others cannot see. Some people, after they probably, maybe when you now tell them that, okay, this is what is happening, or can you see that this thing is happening and I want to work on it, they might also see it alongside with you, and some might not even see it still. But it is majorly seeing what others cannot see. It is sensing what others cannot sense. Okay, going to the next slide now. So vision is one of the God's greatest gifts to mankind. It is the ability to see beyond what is physically available. It is, sorry, it is what differentiates us from animals. The ability to create something from within. So I don't want us to mix it up. Uh, there is what we call vision and there is what we call imagination. So Definitely, imagination is when you sit down, you try to think about something, you imagine it. And imagination is not just dealing with something new. Uh, you know, there's one thing I used to do for physics when I was still doing physics, right in 100 level secondary school. You know, physics is one technical subject for science students. And most times, if you don't try to read the question, understand the question, and imagine how, the, how those things are being played, you might not be able to answer the question. So 
vision actually is beyond that is beyond you just so you can definitely take any physics question now and imagine it and some people might say that is vision that is not vision that one is just imagination so vision is the ability to see beyond what is physically available the ability to create something from within now look at it you are creating something from within so which means that that thing that is within let me call it an idea it might start with an idea okay I have an idea that I have an idea that, but having an idea does not equate to vision. It does not equate to vision. Okay, don't worry. As we move on, I think the next slide I'll explain more on that. Vision is an advantage that differentiates what changer from the commoner. So if you look at everybody in the world now, see the major difference you see among all of us is our vision. Like I told you earlier, that vision is what guides a man it's it guy is the motivation of all human action so it is what guides a man so definitely when we look at those people that has made good impacts in the world the difference between them and the common people that have no impact is vision you know there's a saying that says that the poorest person on earth is not the person who has no job no cars no money and no ass the poorest person is the one who has no vision. Visionlessness is poverty in disguise. So most times, you know, due to what our country is telling us and what the world is even giving to us, we tend to measure poverty based on uh, what assets do you have. So you have cars, you have, you have money, you have a good paying job or something. But that is not just... You know, that is not what we can use to to measure, let me say, riches. Or let me, okay, rather than saying riches, let me say wealth. The poorest person is someone, even though the person is making money, still does not have vision. Because when you don't have vision, there is nothing, even if you have the money, nothing, you won't be guided on how to spend the money. So the poorest person is a visionless person. Visionlessness is poverty in disguise. In fact, I will even bring it to you that all the rich people, let's go to the world richest list now, all of them have a particular vision, and that is what has been guiding them even till now. And that's why some of them are still staying in that list. So which means that even if you are rich and you have no vision, there is probability that you lose the riches. So please, let's understand the fact that visionlessness is poverty in disguise so when you see a poor man when i mean a poor man someone that does not really have much cash or much or have much assets and yet the person has a good vision the person is not poor the person might be poor financially now but the person is not poor because the person is getting somewhere so let us take note of that okay let's move on why the poorest person in the world is a person without a dream the most frustrated person in the world is someone who has a dream but doesn't know how to bring it to pass. That's by my Morio. Now, I said it earlier that a visionlessness person you know, is a poor person. Visionlessness is poverty in disguise. But do you know that, yes, we have people that they can claim that these people, they have no vision, so they are poor. But some people, they have the vision. Okay, let me, don't let me say vision now. They have the dream. Now I'm using two words. I have used idea, I have used dream, I have used vision. Okay. They have the dream, but yet they don't know how to bring it to pass. That one is more frustrating than a visionless a visionlessness person. Now, someone that has no vision, nothing to guide his life, anything life brings, the person accepts. But someone that has a vision, but does not know how to bring it to pass, the person becomes more frustrated. And the person that has no vision the person that has no vision accepts anything given but the person that has a vision will not accept anything and yet they still become frustrated because of the inability to fulfill that vision now i wrote it here boldly that vision minus action is just imagination so which means that you have the vision less action less of action it is just imagination 
it is not it, it is just imagination or let me say it is just dream because dream is equivalent to imagination so when you have the vision and there is no action it is imagination okay so maybe i can rephrase my word don't mind what i wrote here when you have an idea without action it is just imagination so let me bring let me correct myself here that idea plus action brings about vision or let me say idea plus action brings about a vision guided life now when you take actions to your idea that is what brings about you stating out your vision and anything that becomes vision becomes what guides your life but when action is missing from your idea it is just imagination there are several times i as a person i'll just sit down i think there was a time i was very tired very weak and i was like ah, i should just have um some so like a two free a two free number that i will call and by the time i call, call the two free number someone will just disappear in front of me and ask me what do you, what do you want to do and i'll just tell the person then that one is just an imagination because i'm just imagining it in my head ever since i thought about it i've played no action to it so that is idea you might have several people have idea and that's why we tell you that there's people will tell you there's no new idea as as you are thinking it more than five people are also thinking the same thing so it is just an idea what differentiates the idea is the action put into it okay now let's move on now as we all understand okay going back to this place that action is needed when there is idea to bring it to fulfillment so we need to understand that there are certain things we need to do in preparation for our vision you have a vision yes there are so many things you need to do to prepare yourself for the vision and if you don't have a vision, you still need to prepare yourself to have one so that you won't live a useless life. Now, the first one, I would steps in preparing for your vision. The first one is locate your interests. Locate your interests. So many of us, you know, you'd be like, I don't know how to think. I've seen people still saying something like that, like, I don't know how to think. I don't know how to bring about new thing. I don't know how to. Now, everybody has a thinking faculty. God gave us that specially. You know, He gave us, okay, I don't want to go into details of saying He made us in His own image. He gave us that specially. So, definitely, there is something that He has placed in us that will spark our interest. It is normal, it is normal for everybody. Just like Mr. Muiwa last Sunday is interested in anything design anything design graphics motion and that's what i know him for those things spark his interest like anything someone like me anything animals bring it anything else bring it that is what sparks my own interest so you have to to locate your interests you have to know that that thing that particular thing that irritates you some of us we know how to analyze when you see a poster or a flyer now immediately you stand there you check into details of the flyer pointing out the mistake of the designer this person did uh, this person ought to use this color here this color red it is color blue it is color black and you are not seeing it as something you can actually work on it is irritating you and yet you are doing nothing to it just like the situation of Nigeria is related to so many people. And what have you done to it? Nothing. So why don't you see it as, maybe this might be an interest for me. This might be something I can actually work on. What can you see that others cannot see? There so many of us, we like arguing. When they bring about things in politics like this, you will be talking A, others will be talking B. And you are not seeing it as, okay, Wait, my idea is different from everybody's idea. Does that mean that I am not part of them or probably I'm from another world? Why don't you see it as a problem you can work on? What can you see that others cannot see in the environment? Some of us, um, 
you when you get to a dirty environment i'm not trying to give you ideas i'm just i'm looking for an example that is common now now you get to a dirty environment you are theory the first two people did not see it as anything as a big deal they just be like it's normal it's normal that this place should be dirty and you that thing is is this thing is more dirty than it should be or probably this thing is irritating me why don't you see it as something you can work on you can see it others cannot see it then work on it work on it if others cannot see it and you can see it then you should be the one to even guide your step it is going to be um a worse scenario like the example i give when two blind men are there and a gun is being pointed at them and no one knows but at least when someone can see a gun being pointed at them at least the one that can see should be able to guide the second person that couldn't see so see what can you see that others cannot see what is that thing what is that thing that sparks your interest what is that thing that when when you when you see it or when you talk about it your idea is always different from others that might be something god is actually calling you to work on okay the next thing is what is that thing you feel like changing about your community or yourself thank god for um 11 crisis a program like this and you know when that is one of the things we are talking about this is a vision i'm not going i'm not trying to hype the program or something but it is a vision because the organizer could could see what others could not see and decided to come up with something it is a vision and he didn't just thought about th i mean think about it and say okay uh, there's we should have something that will help the youth and we should have um we should have something that should help the youth and he didn't just think about it or probably just say it out to someone he worked on it he worked on it so whenever you have something that you feel like changing in your community that can be a vision that will guide your life see let me just bring it here that there is no good impact without vision so anybody you see making impact currently let me tell you that they have a good vision let's move on because of our time let me try to i don't know uh please mr Muiwa, i don't know the time given so uh, i'll just move on i think i'll anytime i finish i should finish before the time i think i remember now okay steps in preparing for your vision step two pen it down pen it down <laughs> so many of us we are good in thinking you have lots of ideas but yet you've never written it down any year i've never seen someone walking and when i mean penny down i'm not saying compulsively that you take your pen or you go and buy you know a 15 i think pen is 15 naira in nigeria now so you buy a 15 naira pen and you buy 60 leaves exercise notebook and start writing things down we have a lot of tools you can use it's not compulsory you have a pen and a paper your food is there your system is there you have a lot of tools you can use to paint things down don't just think about it on your head don't think about it on your head you know there's the, there a saying that the faintest pen is better than the sharpest brain definitely because this head you have a lot of things you are thinking about but that book does not have anything it is thinking about it stores what you write there permanently and when you have it written down do you know that it's easy for you each time you open that book or you open that notepad when you see it you know that okay i've not worked on this thing today but when it is in your head i tell you the day that you become very very busy you forget about it so when you have something that sparks your interest put it down write it somewhere write it somewhere see it every day you know uh i've been to i think when oh mr Muiwa was saying an undergraduate there's something i appreciate in him you know whenever i get to his room then uh you always see this white board in his room and he's going to do he's going to write it in a coded way definitely if you are an outsider or a stranger you can't know what is what is there but when you see it you know that he's actually working on something that you don't understand so each time he enters his room he will look up and see it someone like me i have notes i have notepad i'm not talking about a notepad application i mean notes notes i buy those big notes to write down my ideas and some of the ideas are what i'm working on currently 
So what I'm trying to say is that write it down. Don't just think about it in your head. Pen it down. Put it somewhere. Make it a reference point for yourself. The next one is strategically analyze your idea. I think this is where most people fail to fail to, or this is what most people fail to do. When they have an idea, you just write it as an idea and waiting for maybe someone big, maybe one angel to come and help them carry out the idea. No. Analyze your idea. That thing you've written down. Look, there's something we call feasibility study. Check the feasibility. Analyze it well. Restructure it. Don't just think you can work on an idea as it is coming to your head. Definitely, sometimes what comes to our head are not something that have been worked on. So you have to put it down, then start analyzing it one by one. Analyze it. Find a time. Sit down with it. Say, okay, if I do this, what will be the outcome? What if this happens? What will happen? Answer all possible questions about your idea. Sit down. Answer all questions about the idea. Write out the needed principles, skills, and tools needed to bring the vision into reality. To some of you, the ideas you are working on currently, you need so many things to bring it to reality. But if you don't sit down and analyze it, how will you get to know that this thing is needed? Some of you will need to learn a skill to bring that idea into reality. But since you've not sit down to analyze it, how would you want to even go with this? So write it down. Write it down. The needed principles, skills, and tools needed to bring the vision into reality. Draw out a plan to work on those things you have written down. So it's not just about you writing it down. Draw out a plan. Okay, for this idea, I will need to learn some digital skills. Okay, when am I starting? Because so many of us, are, like I told you, there are so many ideas in my book also. I'm not trying to act as a perfect person here. There are so many ideas that till today I've not worked on it. And there are so many that after like one year after I've written it down, I'll just say that someone did the uh, bring up a startup relating to my idea. And I'll be like, ah, I thought it, but I even wrote it down last year. That's because I didn't take any action to it. So draw out a plan. Okay, this and this are what is needed. I need funding on this. How do I get funded? I need to learn this. How do I do? I need to meet someone to do this. How do I? So draw out a plan. Draw out a plan on how to work on those things you've written down. These are how to analyze your idea. You have to sit down. It's not just, see, there's no vision that does not require time. So many of you will be claiming busy, 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 busy with nothing. Sit down. Analyze it. You need time. You need time. Okay, let's move on. Okay, sorry. Okay, I'm sorry, please. Okay, let's move to the next one. Oh. The next one is mentorship and partnership. Mentorship and partnership. I put it here that no great idea. Be out in the process. No, there's one thing I used to believe when I was in, uh, when I was an undergraduate. Then, um, I used to believe that I don't like partnering with people. I don't like partnering with people. I, will, uh, I need to just um, do my thing myself. It was later I got to understand that you cannot do it yourself. This is in business studies. I remember I did that when I was in junior secondary school. They would tell you types of ownership, uh, joint ownership, sole proprietorship. Yeah, there are a lot of sole proprietorship. But how many businesses have you seen thriving today that is sole owned, solely owned? So. Definitely, you need partners. You need partners. You need partners. You might be hearing the name of someone as the overall leader of a business. That does not mean that that is the only person working on the business. 
So you be, you might hear someone like Mark Zuckerberg. He's not the only one that owns Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. So you need to you need to have right partners. You need to have right. When I say partners, you see, I'm putting rights to it. So please take note of it. You can have partners that will even spoil the business for you or spoil the idea for you. You need to have right partners to work on your idea, to work on your vision. You need the right set of people to help you out in the process. Next is that learn the necessary skill that will help you in fulfilling this dream. I think I've spoken about that. You learn it. Subject yourself to mentorship. Subject yourself to mentorship. And some of you is not mentorship you need. You need apprenticeship. So you need to go and learn. Like, you know, the mentorship is you go and meet the person for advice and the person advise you. Some of you, you need to go, go and learn. Not just advice. Go and learn. So if you know that what you what you want to work on is something you don't know about at all, then humble yourself, learn, learn. The next one is subject yourself to the right mentor or tutor. Nobody should be above tutelage. So please, I think it's still relating to that. Nobody is above tutelage. Subject yourself to the right mentor and tutor. Then speak with friends that will encourage you. Shun negative people. I have so many people like that that uh, these people, you know, uh, when you talk about, when you tell them, ah, I have this idea, the, the first thing they will say is that you have the money to fund it. I have this one. Do you have this to do? They are always looking for the negative part of it. They've never had given encouragement before. Please, it's best for you not to make those things up. So I'm not telling you not to, uh, I'm not telling you to defend them. What I'm trying to say is that do not share your idea or your vision with such people because they always act as a discouragement to you. But there are some friends that even when you tell them that I want to build a house and they're asking you, what do you have currently? And you're saying, I don't have anything. I only have just two blocks. They will tell you, ah, we can do it. We don't want to do it. And you see, those people say, they even hype their idea more than you. So that is the right set of people. They will hype it that you yourself even what you are not saying before, you must say, okay, yeah, that is true. I can do this. I can do that. That is the right set of people you should, you should, um, let me say, speak to when you have an idea, not speaking to negative people. There are so many people. They are just neg. All their mindset is negativity. They will always find something. They will always find one reason not to achieve that which you want to do. So please make sure you see your friends. See your friends, see them. And one thing about friendship is that when you surround yourself with negative people, I tell you, you can never go far in life. When everyone, everybody that surrounds you, they are negative people, you can never go far in life. I don't know. Okay, I think I've been speaking, speaking, speaking. Please, are you following me? I want to know if you are still. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, following you. Yeah. Yes, sir, we are with you. Okay, I can move on now. Thank you for that. So, now steps, um, the step four, sorry, I'm having to for now. Step five, in preparing for your vision. I turn this one, starts. Starts. Oh, I want you to tell yourself, there's no need of owning your mic. Just tell yourself as you, as you stated that starts. Now, so many of us, we are fond of, uh, let me see, we have this, I don't know what to put it. This, uh, I think they call some people the, the perfectionist. I don't know if that's the right time they use for them. Like they want everything to be perfect before they move on. Definitely. Conditions can never be perfect, especially when the idea is global. It can never be perfect. You always see one thing or the other that still needs to be done. But when you are waiting that, okay, I need to set everything right before you start, you just stay in that position of you planning forever. Be optimistic. Be optimistic. Be optimistic. Do not wait for the best opportunity. <laughs> Please, do not wait for the best opportunity wait for the right time not the best time let's take note of that i'm not telling us to just jump into working on an idea 
what I'm trying to say is that wait for the right time, not the best time, because there will never be a best time. Wait for the right time. So definitely you have a vision, you have something you want to work on, you have an idea, and it has turned to be a vision. And um, I'm not saying you should just jump. I'm not saying you should just jump into working on it. What I'm trying to say is that wait for the right time, not the best time. There will never be a best time. There will never be a best time. Then also, do not stay after your 21-day incubation. Oh, I'm an animal scientist. I'm a graduate animal scientist, and uh, I'll try to explain that further with the story of um, the, the, of an egg or a day old chick. I call it the egg hatching process. I'm sorry that I'm trying to bring my knowledge into you know, but I can explain well with what I know. Okay. Now, you know, after a mother hen produces a fertilized egg and is taken to the hatchery, the liquid form of the egg, which is at the embryonic stage, is covered by a shell, which will inhibit the egg from getting exposed to danger or living a life of its own. Now, you know, the egg we eat. Now, that egg, when it is fertilized and the mother hen lays it, the owner of the hen will we take the egg to an hatchery. Now, when the egg gets to an hatchery, it stays there for 21 days. It stays at the, in the incubator for 21 days. So now, the shell in the egg, there's always shell. There's shell that covers the, the liquid part of the egg. Now, what I'm trying to bring out is that now this shell protects the, the cheek that is about to be formed. And this shell also acts as a covering for the chick not to see what is outside. So now, during this 21-day process, the egg starts to form and starts to develop. You know, as the egg is developing, starts forming, starts forming, starts forming. At day 21, the egg would have been totally formed. And, you know, when the egg is totally formed, there's going to be a chick inside the egg, not the albumen again not the liquid parts so now when the chick is formed inside the egg at the 21 totally formed now what makes the egg shell break because if you are at the archery what you notice that the egg shell will break you know for our local birds they will be the ones to break the they'll be the ones to break the shell themselves for the for the chicks to come out but i'm talking about the one you take to ashley now now the egg breaks itself why the first thing is that there is gas for year and sight. Now, definitely, you know, at day 21, the, the chick has been totally formed and the chick already have its two eyes. The chick cannot see anything except for that shell. And the chick knows that there should be something beyond this shell. And also, the chick will need oxygen. And the oxygen that is penetrating the shell cannot be enough for the chick again. So that is why the chick breaks the, the shell with force itself. Now what I'm trying to say is that this is just, I'm trying to, and now I'm teaching you animal science, don't mind me. So this is just the incubation process. Now, you as a person, when you have an idea, it is normal for you to go through what we call an incubation process. That is when you go through series of development trying to work on your idea. Those things you have lifted, turn it down, learn and subject yourself to mentorship. Those are your incubation process. Now, one thing I've noticed is that so many of us stay in this incubation process for long. Even after you are well developed, you will still be staying in the incubation process. My dear, move out. Move out. After day 21, no one will teach the chick to break the shell. When you know that at least you have 70 to 80 percent of the needed thing you need to fulfill your vision, what are you waiting for? Start something. Start something. Like I said in the previous slide, do not wait for the best opportunity. Wait for the right opportunity. So do not be after 21 days, any, any end that does not break 
if any chick I mean that does not break his shell means that the chick is actually dead. Any chick that does not break his shell in 21 days means that it is dead. So please and um, please subject yourself to the incubation process. I'm well in support of that. Make sure you stay there. Go through series of development and please. I hope someone is not trying to say, maybe I'm telling you that it is after 21 days of you getting me an idea. That's when you move on. That's not what I'm trying to, trying to say. It is 21 days in cheek. It might not be 21 days in your own room. Now, what I'm trying to say is that after you've learned so many things, you've developed yourself, you've developed the right skills, you've developed the right mentality, you you understand how things run in the community, you understand how best to work on the idea you have then start something start something remember the gaps for ear and sight makes the shell break so the testiness the hunger that you have that is why vision you know we said vision is the motivator going back to the first slide now for human for every human action so the hunger the hunger that you have the testiness that you have to work on your vision is what to make you go out, but do not go out hastily. Please, I'm trying to give a balance between these two now. Do not go out hastily. Finish your developmental process, and after that, move out. Okay? Then, the next step in preparing for your vision is reanalyze. Even after you have started, that does not, when you start, definitely, you won't get what you want is not when you are not using gg so it's not possible for you to to attain that level that you want to attain so as you've started you are working towards fulfilling your vision then continue to reanalyze sit down every time okay how can i improve more on this idea how can i do this how can i do that so reanalyze your steps trace your step back from the first one then go again trace it back again go again you see that with that you continue to develop and improve more on on your vision so oh, there is more to your vision than your eyes could capture there is more to your vision than just what your eyes could capture when you start an idea sometimes you might just start with something simple but as it goes on it becomes a global thing so it's, there is more to it than what your eyes could capture. Even what we are seeing, there is more to our environment than what our eyes could capture. You know that if I bring a microscope now and you see everything going on in your environment, you know that there is more to the environment than just what you can see. The vision is bigger than you, but you cannot understand until you start. Up. Some of us, we have a vision and we don't know that the vision is bigger than us. You know, when I when you know, I was about to start Animal Home, you know, then I started as an undergraduate, and I have some advisors, some lecturers that act as advisors. They are they are gurus in the field, so uh, they are professionals in animal science. I met some of them, and you know, one of them I like him is one of my favorite lecturers. He says something. We invited him for I think for a program in Animal Home, and he says something that the time is coming when. You know, now you can, the founder can easily make decision and nobody will question him. Now, the time is coming whereby before he makes decision, he has to carry too many people along and they have to put a yes to it. Let me tell you, even at this phase, definitely the organization is still growing. I can't make decisions on my own alone. I have to, I've made decisions. There was a day I made a decision. And one of my executive called me and asked me, why will you make this decision without telling us? And I actually gave him the reason for that. Now, what I'm trying to say is that the vision is bigger than you. It might start with you, but it's bigger than you. But you cannot know until you start. I never knew that it's something, you know, I always think that, okay, I started this organization and definitely I should have the virus. But the time is coming. I'm, I still have the virus, but yet people have to support me with what I'm doing. So the vision is bigger than you. It is not just about you. In fact, funny thing is that without me, the organization will continue running. So you see that it is bigger than what I actually started with. Now what I'm trying to say is that start. When you start, that's when you know how big. In fact, you won't even know how big it is. 
you can only imagine how big it is. You can only imagine it. A true and good vision is unselfish. So some of us, uh, we have this catching business idea, and the mindset of the business idea is to make money. Definitely, I'm not saying you won't make money in your business. But a true and a good vision is unselfish. It is visually directed towards solving a problem, helping others, or making the world a better place to live in. A good vision is directed, even if you make money from solving the problem, the first thing is to solve the problem. When Facebook, I think I watched this, this I've forgotten the name of the movie that talked about the story of um, Mark Zuckerberg, how he started Facebook. And I remember that during the movie, um, he actually started with the fact that he wanted to create a platform with, for his departmental meet or so, to, for them to connect. And that was how he started. The faculty took it, the old school took it, they moved out of the state, and now it's global. Now, what I'm trying to say is that he actually started with the mindset of solving a problem, not the mindset of I want to become the richest in, in America. So, find a problem to solve, not just money to make. Find a problem to solve. Definitely, while trying to solve the problem, money will come. Money will come. So, what I'm trying to say is that uh, your vision should be unselfish. Your vision should be unselfish. Do not create a vision that is just for you alone. Definitely, if the vision is for you alone, the vision is just you and cannot be bigger than you. And anything that is not bigger than you is not a vision. Okay, so that would be the end of my presentation. Thanks for listening to me. Uh, Mr. Muiwala saying the thank you for having me tonight. I don't know if I I don't know if I don't know if I don't know Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, we appreciate you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. All right, all right, all right. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Nice, nice. All right, thank you so much, sir. We really, really appreciate um, the session. Thanks so much for the session. So quickly, um, if anybody have a question, a question or two, let's let us get started so that um, we can ask our um our founder about the question any question any cl um, clarification or so that you want to so you can just um put it on and let's 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 have it anybody okay i have a question oh good the other time he said that five under the second column he said, do not wait for the best opportunity. I don't understand that, that part at all. Is it still online? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes, I'm online. I'm online. Okay, I said, do not wait for the best opportunity. Rather, wait yes, for sir. the right opportunity. Exactly. What I'm trying to say is that so many of us, we wait for when everything is perfect before we start. So I think I've, I emphasize on the point that you can never have everything 100%. So start with what you have. Start with what you have. It's not compulsory that you have everything readily set 100% before you move. So that is the best opportunity. Rather, just find a right opportunity. Find the, the chance for you to start what you need to start. Not when everything is totally set. Do you get that? Yes, I already guess it, sir. All right, beautiful. Any other person? Any other person? Ask your question now. Maybe you want to ask how, how they started, how the animal who started. So okay, I want to ask it. I want to ask it. All right. When you were an undergrad, it's like, how do you... Please, how do you... Please. Okay, I think someone is talking already. Yeah, I'm coming. 
All right, you can continue. You can continue. Uh, okay. Like, will how start do you start after you? Okay. Like, how do you start the? Okay, you have this idea that you want to, that you want to start something. How do you bring up people? Like, how do you gather yourself and start up a, and start up something like this? That's what I just want to ask you. Okay. Uh, I think Mr. Miwa has has uh, has led you to asking me how Animal Home started now. So, uh, let me just exactly, tell you the exactly, story. Sir. Okay. Uh, when I was in 400 level, about to cross to 500 level. Uh, I remember that uh, I was taking tutorials in a day. I teach undergraduate students, and I was taking tutorial in a day. And you know, someone just walked up to me and told me that, okay, oh, I have an idea I want to work on. It's a non governmental organization. Actually, before then, I don't know how non governmental organization run. I just used to hear NGO, NGO. I don't know what they do. I don't know anything about the. UN SDGs, the Sustainable Developmental Goals. I've never heard about. No, okay, I think I read about it, but you know when you don't know about something. So he came up and told me he wants to work on the idea. He told me the name, and I was like, ah, yeah, I'm very busy. I don't have time for all this one you are talking about. It's something that is not bringing money. So you call it non-government organization. I definitely, no, I'm not working on this. And uh, I, but one thing about me is I don't reject proposal immediately. So I was like, let me just think about it and see how I can balance up myself with it. And later on, I just felt like, let me just see what they are doing. At least let me learn one or two things. So we started the organization. And um, by God's grace, the organization is still existing till now. So they made me the vice president then. Though we are not using president now, we are using chairman. So they made me the vice president then in the organization. And with that, I started learning how non government organization works. As at then, I've not even had the idea of animal home. So I started my own incubation process at that period. So I started learning about the United Nations SDG. I started learning about affiliation. That was when I even learned how to how to approach matrons, patrons of the organizations. And you know, then it was more like I was learning. I was just following the founder then, just following him, learning, learning, learning. And I think three months after. Animal Home actually started with a business idea. Then I wanted to make money at 500 levels. I was like, now we soon start buying manuals and everything. Let me just try to make money. And I thought about it. What do I have to offer? Well, I know how to, you know, in our own school, I'm not trying to rubbish my school now. You know, that's generally about the educational system. You know, I finished with, you know, with a Bachelor of Technology in Animal Production and Health. And majorly, they will teach us about the production. The the other thing, even the production self, except if you go for your IT in the in the place where they will teach you, nobody's ready to teach you. And I I did my IT at a place where they taught me about it very well, and I was like, ah, I can monetize this skill now. I learned it. So many people didn't have the opportunity I had. So and then I used to go for seminars. I go for trainings, travel for seminars and everything. So I was like, all these things I've gained so far. Let me just sell it to the world now. So that was how I started. I met a friend of mine. So who is also in the same department, he's the co-founder of the organization currently. So we, I told him about the idea and he was like, ah, wow, that is even looking for how to pay his tuition fee already that we should work on it. Then we started with organizing a training. So from the training, we organized the free training and told them they would be paying some people. I think when we did the free training, about 44 people joined. And when we introduced the payment to them, you know Nigerians now, from 44, we were reduced to six. And you know, you are like, hey, are you going to just do this? Six, six is too small for us, but we will continue to push on. Now, as time goes on, then due to the fact that I volunteered in the first organization I told you that they made me the vice president, then I started thinking about community development through the organization. Then, with the skill I have, I thought about it that we are developing community for humans. What about these animals? Definitely, there are a lot of people that go in different, um, they, they go, they tell them they want to vaccinate, or is it immunization, they call it in humans now. On this um, polio, yellow fever, measles, they give them for free. You see them knocking on people's door. And I was like, ah, we can create these things for animals now. We also, we can be knocking on people's door, telling them that bring your good to, let's vaccinate. Bring your good to, let's vaccinate. And, you know, we, with my students, the six people, 
then I told them, I told them the idea, and they all said, hey, it's okay, let's try it out. And we did it. You know, after we did it the first time, the picture went viral. Like I don't understand how it even went viral. You know, we, we started going, we went to a local community saying, you know, in Yoruba, our library just happened not to do like people who vaccinate animals here, yeah, yeah. and you know, it was fun that day. And from there, people started saying they want to join, they want to join. That was when I received the idea that okay, instead of you making this thing business, business cannot run, cannot go far. Why don't you make it more of developing the community, which is majorly a non-profit organization? And that was how we started then. People started joining from our school, started joining, started joining. We started organizing events. We called lecturers. Then I used to go, I used to meet lecturers to ask them for advice and everything. I meet seniors to ask them. There's so many, some of the lecturers actually told me it's not possible. It's not something that you can work on. So that's the discouragement part. But at the long run, we had about 60 or 70 something members. And later on, I have this multiplication mindset. Like, I don't like to just leave something the way it is. Then I decided that, okay, let me introduce this thing to other schools. I remember the first school we introduced it to, Uni Lauren. Oh, the way they wrote this is a student. That was how <laughs> the person said a student is bringing a student from Lao Tech. I finished from Lao Tech. A student from Lao Tech, a state university, is bringing one stupid organization to our own Teja University. And I was like, eh, ah, so how they rubbed this to me. But currently now, <laughs> oh, those where we have been rejected, they are calling us to come back today. And much more than even where, where, we, where we introduce it to, we've been able to get across to more than eight, nine schools currently. And we are still even growing. We have graduates, we have lawyers, we have doctors among us now and just something we started in a university that started with business i want to make money so what i'm trying to say is that you know the process of starting up an organization well i just told you the i paraphrased everything it is no other than that uh, it is no other than that there are times that i lost balance there are times that i almost give up there are times but yet we are still pushing on so it's just it takes endurance and perseverance to build up something like this Okay, sir. Okay, sir. I understand. I understand your point. So, how do you balance everything? Okay, right now I'm in 200 level, but I have. Okay, I'm I'm an ambassador of my splash. So I'm thinking of how do I balance everything with academics and church and and lectures and everything here. So I just want to ask that question. Okay, um, balancing everything. Oh, okay. Let me just give you a brief profile of myself. You know, when I was in school, apart from the organizations that I told you now, I was, uh, I was an executive in my fellowship, a Christian religion settings like that. So I was an executive there, uh, and I was a tutor. <laughs> I think Mr. Muiwa. <laughs> okay, so I was a tutor then, and you know, <laughs> the way we take tutorial in our in our school, then in our religious organization. It's, it's more like we say we have a school. You know, when you yourself have a university on its own, so we we are very, very busy. Sincerely, we were very, very busy. So, but one thing has been our own mindset towards it. The first thing is that we set our priorities. We set our priorities. Now, um, definitely, I'm not, I don't want to, but I don't know the, but I'm not going deeply into that now. We set our priorities right. We set up as long as we understand the reason we are in school, we understand what is most important to us, which is God, and we understand the reason we are in school. Then there's a way we can bring about balance to ourselves. The balance might mean sacrifice, but yet we try as much as possible to balance ourselves. And I used to tell people, balancing is not a one-time thing; it's a process that you continually do till you finish, even till you die. Because so many people, they, I don't think there's anybody that we come to a point and say, I am balanced. Definitely, there are times that probably throughout, for three days, you might not have time to open your books to read. But when you notice that, that is when you know that, ha, I'm already deviating from the sole purpose of coming to school. Then you do what? You shift yourself, you shift your attention and your concentration a little bit towards that. So that is balancing. 
So you continually balance, check yourself daily. Daily is something you do every day. So okay, today at the long at the at the end of the day, what did I do today? I did this, I did that, I did that. What are the important things that I missed today? Why did I miss them? You can see then when I was in school, I have the notes I used to, you know, I told you I like writing notes. So I have a note early in the morning. I write out all my plans and my schedules for the day. Definitely, I know that there are some emergency schedules that we could later come in the day, but I write the important ones. Okay, I'm going to class. After class, I'm going to tutorial. After tutorial, I need to read for two hours. Those are the important ones. Anything that comes in, we actually come into that. So that is just the way. And definitely, it's not every time that everything you write on your notes is what you do. Definitely, there are times that you might not be able to achieve one. But when you don't achieve one, call yourself to order. Why didn't I achieve this? Why didn't I do this? Then what is the reason? How can I avoid it next time? That is the way to balance yourself. So it's just setting the priorities, setting your priorities. Put it on a scale of preference. Thank you. All right, all right. Now, um, Victoria, are you in? Uh, they've answered your question. Okumola, Victoria. Well, I guess maybe she is not. All right. So, any other person? Any other person? I want to ask any question. Any other person? Nobody, right? <laughs> well, okay. I, I would have loved if you guys have had, uh, asked some questions, right? Because, you see, um, it's a long journey anyways. It's, it's a long one. And then, so there are some things that, um, well, then it, it's okay. There are some questions that will come up as a result mm -hmm. that you are actually doing stuff. And there are some questions that will come up as a result that um, just want to start. So there are some questions you not ask because you've not started. <laughs> so there are some questions you not ask because you've not started. Um, I have a question, sir. Okay. Sorry, I have a question, sir. Um, so let's have Mr. Right. Oladeji first, then we have Mr. Oluwashimi next. Then we can right. have Ogumala. Thank you, Mr. That was a wonderful section, sir. But sir, I want to ask you, how were you able to sell yourself out to the public? How were you able to sell your ideas out to the public? How were you able to sell your visions out to those that worked with you or working with you? Did you get the question, sir? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I got the question. So you As said, how was I? Then, oh, okay. Sir. Okay, definitely. One of the things that you need to, to do to sell yourself out to the public is having something the public does not have. Oh, uh, You know, as a student, one of the leverage I had was the fact that I, I was a distinction student. I you know I had a first class out of school. And then when people see you that you are coming with something like that, you know, they will believe, okay, as a first class student, at least you should have a little bit sense. Now, definitely not everybody will have a first class. So I'm not trying to say if you don't have a first class, you can't sell yourself out. But have something they don't have. Be good at what you do. When you are good at what you do, to someone like, okay, let me, sorry, I'm using Mr. Muiwa as example now. Someone like him cannot sell something out on, on design and people won't buy it because they, everybody knows that he's good at what he does. I don't know if you are getting what I'm trying to say. So when you have something the public does not have, definitely they will buy you. Do you understand, please? I don't know if that answers your question. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So I should have something that others don't have or... Or the public does Yes, sir. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Mr. Shemi. Uh, thank you, sir. Can I proceed, sir? Yeah, please. Yes, please. Okay, sir. Um, thank you so much for the teaching. So I just have a very short question, actually. 
Now, I believe that it's important to volunteer, it's important to meet the needs of people and solve problems. But I also have um, the opinion that at some point it's very good to monetize. I mean, find one or two ways to make money, to get revenues. So looking at the story of Animal Home, for example, um, it's an NGO to make the world a better place. But is there any other way you feel that as students we can still volunteer and at the same time make money? Because I believe even if you are volunteering, you're helping people, there will be this point where you need money to, you know, back up yourself, probably to get materials and all of that. So how do you, like, channel your energy to both sides at the same time, volunteering and monetizing at the same time? Okay, now, when it comes to volunteering, you are volunteering not to make money. So if you want to make money, you can develop a business idea yourself to make money. The idea might also be an idea that solves people's problems. So when I'm saying probably your, you know, I think I mentioned in this slide that your vision should be unselfish. That doesn't mean that you won't make money. What I'm trying to say is that money shouldn't be your first thing. It shouldn't be your first reason for creating the problem. I mean, for creating the solution. So oh, definitely you need money. You need money. Animal Home is a non-government organization. I have other business I run. Animal Home is not my business now. It's not my business. So what I'm trying to say here is that you can have something you give out to people that still fetch you money. That also might still be solving people's problem. So don't, I'm not, when I say vision, vision is not just a about building non-profit organization i'm just using that as an example for you not like everyone for community development number two to build yourself so that one is for is not to make the money now as you are volunteering later on money can come so probably maybe the organization have allowances they are paying to students or something but the first idea shouldn't be the money for non-profit organization so let's say, I think some of us, when I was in school also, I was an ambassador. I became this, um, what do we call it, alert. When alert just started then, you know, they created the form then, they said they needed ambassador for the school. So I was the first ambassador here in Lautech. They told us to make a video. I did the video, did everything then. Now what I'm trying to say is that from that moment, you know, one of the things I learned through the process is marketing. Because then they give us targets. We have to open 20 accounts. Though they will pay also, but we have to open 20 accounts. So definitely, I'm doing that because, and remember, Alat is not a non-profit organization. It is a business. They are a bank. Alat by Wema. So it is a bank. Now what I'm trying to bring out here is that you can make money also. So it's just you understanding what you want to do part time. If it's money you want to make, make the money. If it's volunteering you want to do volunteer so and if you want to create your own organization you can create a business organization that still solves people's problems so please get get it so it's not compulsory that uh, the only not profit only non-profit organization solve the community problem there are still businesses that solve the community problem that people are even happy that such business came up or came into existence because it is solving their problem and at the same time the owner is making money from it thank you so much sir. okay um so ogumala victoria are you in for us yes sir all right good so, evening sir good evening my question is that is vision the same as dream and, and also is it possible to have uh, various visions at the same time and also realize them all together at the same time that was it. please take the question again the second part i said is it i said is it possible to have various visions at the same time and also realize all of them all together at the same time. I don't know. Do you get? It? Hello. 
Hello? Okay. You said, is it possible to have various vision at the same time? Then what? Then maybe realize all of them. Maybe all of them become the reality at the same time. Okay. Okay, I think I get that now. Now. Um, okay, now it's possible to have several, several visions. Now let's take note. Visions are not vision until it becomes what guides your life. So it is possible to have several ideas. Maybe I should just bring it down there. So it is possible to have several ideas. Now it becomes a vision when that idea starts guiding your lifestyle. So please let's take note of that. And having several ideas, you can have it, but based on this level, it's best to work on one per time. Definitely, you might not have enough resources to, to work on the ideas at the same time. So it's best for you to just take one, one work on it. Now, you get big to an extent that you can work on multiple ideas at the same time. But for now, you can just start with one. As students, I don't I think majority of people that are here should be students. So as students, you need to balance yourself. You can't be having an idea on fashion, having an idea on technology, having an idea on this, on agriculture, and you want to do everything and yet still have a good result. It will affect you, let's be sincere. So work on one per time, based on this level. Work on one, achieve one. When you achieve that one, then you can move on to the next one. So don't jump pack ideas together, or else you know, there's a saying that if you chase two rats, you might end up losing the, 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 the two rats. So work on one, focus on one and work on it. Okay. Then the second one is, is vision the same thing as dream. Dream is different from vision. See, dream, dream is still almost the same thing like idea. So now it becomes a reality. Or let me say it becomes a vision when it starts guiding your life. I think I've mentioned that. So it is still a dream. It is just still an idea for you at the, at the stage of dream. So, but when you start working towards it, okay, this is what I want to do. You start learning things you need. You follow the steps I listed out. Then that is when it becomes your vision. Do you understand? <laughs> okay, any other person um, that has a question? Uh, any other person? Yeah, is that all? Is that all? Is that all? Before we move on, is that all? All right. Um, so if that's all, that's that's fine. So um, thank you so much, um, Mr. Obalulu Abusagi. We really, really appreciate you, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for uh, the privilege for um, for coming here. Thanks for honoring our little uh, invitation and uh, thanks for the knowledge, thanks for the well of wisdom. We appreciate you so, so much. And, um, all this thing would not have been this if these persons have not contributed their part by saying that, yes, we want to ensure that um, people are getting better every day so it's their contribution mine is just to bring it together every one of them is their contribution is what they are uh, they have in mind already so they have us in mind initially so they it's just a platform this is just a platform to bring everybody to share their mind right so and um i i want to appreciate him so much i want to appreciate him so so much thank you sir thank you sir all right so guys uh, <laughs> So guys, let's let's appreciate him. Let's just unmute ourselves. Appreciate him once again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Yes. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, all right. So, um, quickly, uh, where is this guy? All right, so um, for today, we will be checking up on this person. Um, uh, yeah, so, so the person we're debating about is Andrew Carnegie. And, um, so some people might know him and some people might not. So... Tomorrow we talk about him and then what um, Disney. So you know we didn't talk about what Disney um, today. We only talked about what you guys want to work on, work on other. So we'll be talking about those two guys before we start uh, tomorrow's lecture, right? So please let's not forget and uh, let's share as much as possible to get about it. So tomorrow we'll be getting our data. So we we'll continue our data tomorrow again, right? So today we just wanted to. Uh -huh. God. <laughs> right. Don't worry. There will be. There is, we just wanted to see how you guys will respond, even if there is no data. At least you should be able to compress it, and um, not like you should be using the data to watch YouTube or just go and download movie on Netflix and then be good, right? So don't use our data to watch Netflix. <laughs> All right, so tomorrow we, we will later we continue by God's grace. So please let's not forget, let's read what is important. And then don't forget that one thing that you are working on. Continue it um, today. So just continue what you are working on, whatever it is that you started yesterday. Continue today. So tomorrow we continue our lecture. Then um, tomorrow is well, Thursday, I guess. So then we continue on Friday and Saturday. Okay, sir, I want to ask a question. All right. I want to ask a question. Okay, with this stuff that I'm doing that I told you about, about my splash, some people are some people are saying that, okay, if my money is not safe, if my money is not safe, then I'm not feeling, like, discouraged that. Should I really back out? Because it's, I'm getting tired of it. People are not really doing it like that. All right, let me ask you, are you there? Yes, I'm there, sir. You personally, do you trust the team? Sure, I trust it. You trust it to what extent? I'm, I'm, because I'm doing it because the thing is that I don't do all these things, but I'm, I'm, I'm just drawn to it. I don't know why. I know it's not, it's not scam. Yeah, it's not, I'm not talking about spiritual drawing now. I'm not talking about whether you are drawn to it or not. Do you trust I know, it? I know. I know. Yes, I trust it. And so, so to what amount I, of your money is into it? The thing is that you can put 2% of your money. That's 50 naira. So Anytime what, you receive credit alerts. What percentage of your money is into it? My own percentage of money. <laughs> There's no money in Nigeria. So I have to put 2%. <laughs> <laughs> because you know one thing about money is that um especially as students everybody wants to play safe right everyone wants to ensure that okay. they are not um even if it's 15 naira they have they don't want to lose it right yes now they, they need the assurance that that 15 naira even if they did not get any interest they will still not lose that money Okay. okay. Now let me give you an yes, uh, yes. let me give you an example. I remember why uh, I was on campus and um, they talked about. Um, I think that was the, my first time of Ethereum, right? Now, the person came and said, "Okay, uh, for that Ethereum, what you will do is that you have your own Ethereum conversion. Then another person that comes underneath you, 
like that as the ch uh, chain begin to grow your own uh, interest begin to increase so you don't need to get more money later now literally it's 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 not a bad thing but if you tell another person that okay this and this and this and the person asks you okay how much and you tell the person is about three thousand five hundred the next thing they'll feel is if i give you three thousand five hundred and then nothing at the end to my now their first question will i be able to get my money back is my money safe <laughs> So, exactly. That's what people are saying. Yeah, yeah. So there's no way people will do it if they don't have the assurance that first, this is what we are called. It's called money, right? Money sometimes people are driven by it, so it's hard for some persons to just look into it. So your first attribute of an ambassador is to be able to convince someone that what they are doing is what you are doing. What you are proposing to them to do is not something from. Um, any other places. It's something that you have done and you trust the process and then this is the result for it and this and that. So they need first, they need to trust you before they can. They, they, they are not trusting the company. Now, let me just give you an example. If anybody wants to um, um, invest, maybe let me say investment or something. If I'm bringing out an investment today and say, okay, guys, uh, there's this investment and then you get about, uh, let's say, 30%, for example, you get about 30% and the less and the less. Now, why people will do that with me is not because of that investment. It's actually because they trust me. So if I thought they yeah, made yeah. with the money, they know who to meet. So it's not because they know who okay. to meet, then there's issue with the money. Right now, imagine that you now want to do another investment with another person. Let's say the person is saying 45 percent, and I am saying 30 percent. They will come to me. Why? Because they know that okay, this person has integrity, so I can still um, um, trust that person on that person and along the way. But the other person that is saying 45, if anything happens, the person can run away, and that's all. And 35 that you ought to use to eat. Someone has collected it, and, and, and you don't know where the person is. All right, so your own ability is for you to be able to portray trust to them. Once you are able to portray that trust to them, they can actually, uh, they can at any time come to you and say, okay, yes, we are doing this. Let me let me invest this thing with you. At least go share problem. You exactly. get you get my idea. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, so beautiful. Don't worry, everything will be fine. So don't get discouraged. Right, but ensure that you trust them personally. Yes, sir. Uh, sure, sure. It's important. Ensure you trust them. Don't let them use money to destroy your integrity in the face of others. Okay, sir. It's very important. Your integrity is more important than any money. Yes, sir. All right. Yes. All right. Good. So, um, okay, um, so so that's that's one thing that I want everybody to please. Put your attention to it too. Don't forget your integrity is more important than money. You will get to a point in our lives, every one of us will get to a point in our life that your integrity, your dignity is more important than the skills you can offer. You get to a point whereby it is not about skills at that point, it is about your person, your personality. And you know that there are some things you cannot do because of my personality. There are some things I cannot do because of my personality. It's not by pride or something. It's just me. Right? It's just, that is me. That is just how it is. I cannot do this. Why? Because of this and this. Not because of money. Right? Hold your money. Keep your money. God will provide money for me. I will have the little money I need to. Just keep your money. Let my integrity stay intact. Right? All right. So... That's that for that. Tomorrow we continue. Let's not forget who we are reading about. Then we continue tomorrow. Then we'll be having uh, Mr. Olade Jolushola tomorrow. Uh, he's one of my to right? And then, yeah, I want you guys to come and learn. Then come and learn from this one, too. And um, so uh, tomorrow, hopefully, we'll be able to split um, the topics of our tax, that's for the final project. So the final project will be on Tuesday, next to Tuesday. Then we'll be able to split the tax. Everybody will select their tax and then we work on it. All right, I already 9.33. So um, if there is nothing else, so guys, let's call it a moment, a day, a minute, a whatsoever. <laughs>
All right, so. Okay, I said um, what um, I said it earlier now. Sir, with my other thing, please can you come again? Oh, oh, on which part? Sorry. <laughs> Everything I say is not here. Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Haha, <laughs> okay, I said um, tomorrow. We'll be having Mr. Olade Jolushola, so I want every one of us to be available for the session. And um, we will love everybody to buy tomorrow, hopefully, we should share tax. And the tax is what we are going to work on in our project, more like a, a little project. Um, um, but we will um, have our presentation on Tuesday. It's not a big thing, just a short one, and we talk about it. And so, um yeah that's it so uh we are reading about Walt disney Walt disney and um, um andrew carnegie so we are reading about those two so please and please just look into that um i think that's all that's all i said so without further argument and discussion right, i think we'll be seeing each other tomorrow right it's nice having everyone here uh, thank you, sir. Shout out to everybody. Sir. Thanks for thanks for coming. Thanks for having and thanks for thanks Gaida. It has been lovely one. So that makes it the video of course. Yeah, it has been lovely one. Thank thanks guys. Ah. So nice. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. All right, good night, Thank guys. you, sir. Good night, sir. Yeah, good night, guys. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Okay, sir. Okay, All sir. Right. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. Good night. All right, sir. Bye. Yeah, you too. You too. Stay safe, guys. Stay safe. Yeah. Yeah, you guys should stay safe. Yeah. All right. Uh... Yeah, stay safe, guys. Stay safe. Favor, there's the other favor is not here tonight, right? There's no two person for you guys to be fighting who will be good first. <laughs> uh, all right, uh, all right, good night. Stay safe, guy. Okay, my network today. Yeah, uh, yeah, the next work is a little bit somewhere. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Don't worry. Just just remind me so that we can um, make use of the other line you talked about. All right, so stay safe. Be good. All right. Antiwa. Antiwa. Antiwa ton ye, je wa muta ya yin ku bai. E o muta ya yin o.
ni o muta ya yewe.